Have you ever suffered with vertigo? If you have, you won't soon forget it. It can be terrible. I'm Dr. Megan Bumbles, and I thought it would be good for us today to talk a little bit about vertigo. What is it? What does it feel like? What can typically cause it? And what are treatments for those causes? So first thing, what does it feel like? Now, when I have patients come in with vertigo, they often tell me they feel like the room is spinning around them, or sometimes they feel like they are spinning within the room. Sometimes they talk about feeling like they're leaning or tilting or getting pulled more one way compared to the other. The other thing, and you may have felt this on your own even if you haven't had vertigo, if you feel really dizzy, sometimes you get a vasovagal response that will make you feel really hot or nauseous or have a headache, almost like you feel like you're going you're to throw up. Those feelings all go with it. And vertigo can be really debilitating. I mean, sometimes it can last hours to, you know, days, but other times it can last months and months. And think about how difficult it is for someone who always feels like they just can't get their bearings and they're nauseous for all that time. It, it can be pretty terrible. Um, in order to understand it, we really want to think about the complex system that your body uses to hold your head and neck upright, which is really kind of amazing if you think about it. We've got our eyes, so your eyes can help you localize where you are in space. Your ears can help you, like if I have my eyes closed and I just listen to someone that's talking to me, a lot of times I can localize, you know, turn the Marco Polo game that the kids play in the pool. They can localize where people are just based on listening. There's other, also some pretty amazing reflexes called writing reflexes between your neck and between the nerves in your neck and in your brain. Uh, reflexes, just like most people know about, if you put your hand on a hot stove before that message even registers in the brain, your your reflex has already pulled your hand off the stove is protective. So these writing reflexes are also protective because they try to keep your eyes level with the horizon. And let's face it, if we're looking where we're going, that's a lot better than for our longevity than if we've got our head up here because that's when we fall on our faces. Um, the other thing is in the middle of the neck, really close to the carotid arteries, there are pressure receptors and they work with your blood pressure that can help even with where, you know, learning where you are based on your pressure. So they all work together. It's a very complex system. And if any part of it gets mixed up, your brain gets really confused and it can cause vertigo. So a common one, which is probably the easiest one to fix, is if you have a sinus infection or you have a lot of fluid in one ear compared to the other, your body can get really confused about well, which way is right and left because when you move on one side, it gets, it's confused compared to the other. So the treatment for that, sometimes there's medication. Sometimes in the office here, we can do special, uh, almost like tapping techniques on the sinuses to try to help you get them to drain. Another thing that we actually see a lot in the office is people who have restrictions in the upper two or three bones in the neck, either because they bumped their head or they, they slept funny with with their head really tilted to one side. If I can get those bones moving better and then we can reteach the body hold, how to hold your head more upright, a lot of times that will resolve the vertigo because that's where those reflexes are located. So if you can make sure that they're working properly, then the body can fix it on its own. Um, and really the technique that we use in the office, it's called Pedavon, that is what the technique is based on, is these neurological writing so we tend to have success with those cases. One of my favorite ones I can think of was a woman who had already been off work for three months because she, she just even couldn't get herself up out of bed. She was so dizzy and going through the treatment within about two weeks, she was actually ready to go back to work and so excited. The third one that I tend to see a lot is when people get what are called canaliths. So lith means stone. They're little stones that are in the canal of your ears. And when they're floating around in there, your body gets really confused, like where you are versus where that is, and that can cause vertigo too. And there's something that can treat that. It's called Epley's Maneuver. I'll have Sarah help me with that. So Epley's is a way to try to get the stones out of the canals and move them into your inner ear so your body can absorb them. Now, we usually do this in the office, but there, you can try it at home as well. So Sarah, let me have you just sit away from me. Normally you would have someone just sit for 10 minutes and then after 
as she sat, we're going to lean her on her back nice and slow. Now you do have to do it slow because anyone who's ever had vertigo knows any kind of movement of the head can make them feel really, really nauseous. Scoot off the table a little bit. So once we're here, I'm going to turn her head really slowly, about 45 degrees, to the affected side, which we're going to say for her is her right. That's the side that you feel like you're turning to. Now again, you want to do it slow. And here's the worst part. Now I'm going to bring your head down about 45 degrees. A lot of times they'll have them open their eyes and watch their eyes. Someone who has really bad vertigo, you might actually see their eyes jerk or dart back and forth. That's called nystagmus. Lots of times they'll tell you they feel like they're going to throw up. If they can tolerate this, sometimes it takes 30 seconds, sometimes it takes five minutes. After that point, they hold this another two minutes. If they can't tolerate it, you know, this might not be an option for them at the moment. So once two minutes has gone by when she's feeling okay, I slowly turn her this other way. And then as soon as we're at about 45 degrees, we're going to quickly turn her on this left shoulder. And the idea is in this part, we're, we're trying to move those stones and those curly canals down into the more inner part. And again, she's probably going to get a reactivation of all those symptoms again. Once she's okay, we keep it here another two minutes, and then we slowly sit her up. So it's really honestly not the most fun thing for the patient at all, but if they've been feeling nauseous and all this dizziness for weeks, sometimes a few minutes of feeling terrible is worth it. Usually what we tell them too after doing this is you don't want to lay horizontal for about two days after this. So as much as I don't like sleeping in the recliner, it's probably better for that person to do that to make sure that everything is draining. Hopefully this will be helpful to you or someone you love.